everyone, and welcome to Reach Community Church. There it is, where we reach people with the words and needs of life. It is good to see everybody. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I haven't been here for the last couple weeks. I noticed. Uh, Lori and I are happy to be back. I wasn't just skipping out. I had the opportunity to preach at uh, one of our sister churches in Marlette, out in the Thumb area, uh, the past two Sundays, and it went, uh, I believe it went really well. And I uh, got to meet some really nice folks and um, talk about the uh, possibility of coming together um, for some uh, men's breakfast in the future with some of their men. So a little bit more on that. Uh, but a really, really good time. But it's so good to be back. I wanted to give a personal thank you for everyone and anyone that helped out with my dad's memorial. Um, I would have the following Sunday after it happened, after two Saturdays ago, but I wasn't here. And uh, that went really, really well, and I know a big part of that was because so many of you guys chipped in, whether you gave us some food or gave us time, um, and I'm just so appreciative. I'm not going to mention names because I would forget somebody, and I don't want to do that, uh, but you know who you are, and I think I've personally thanked many of you, um, but if I have it, it's not out of desire. I really, really appreciate that. So enough about me, let's, uh, let's get to announcements. And I do have quite a few of them this morning, so I'm actually going to be reading them because uh, I don't want to miss something. Um, a WANA program, we are looking to start that up uh, this coming fall on Wednesdays. And uh, we are looking for interest. And so if you have a young one or you are sitting here right now as a young one and you're like, yeah, I want to do a WANA, um, please start to let us know because um, we're looking at how we're going to make that work. And uh, we want to know what interest level there is. If you're not sure what a WANA is, it's, it's kind of like a uh, youth Christian program that we do on Wednesday nights. Uh, we've done it for years, um, and so many of you... Yeah, for the little ones. It's for the little ones. It wouldn't be like a state level. Um, though I think some, you know, like sixth grade, like if Craig was here, he knows it a lot better than me. So you have to, I'll have to apologize. I don't have all the details, but um, it's for the younger kids. Um, and so the ones that are going to be dismissed in here just in a few minutes, those are typically the ones that would go to a lot. Great, great program. It's kind of like a boy, or, boy Scouts or Girl Scouts for Christians. Um, kind of a good way to sum it up. So please let Pastor or myself know, or Craig know, because Craig is kind of the one that's spearheading this. Um, we would really appreciate that. Um, we are meeting this afternoon, uh, the church in general, whoever can make it out at the community garden um, from 1 to 2.30. There's a meet and greet. It's been advertised. Um, we're hoping to get people from the neighborhood uh, to come out there. We want to have some faces from Reach um, there as well. And so if that's something that you'd like to do, um, just show up. Um, that's all we need you to do. Um, if you're not sure where the community garden is, ask one of us. We can, we can get you directions and an address. Uh, so that's today, 1 o'clock till 2.30. Uh, we are still planning a s'mores and more. Um, uh, Friday, October 1st is the date that we're zeroing in on. And so kind of mark your calendars on that. Because um, if we're going to do one of these things, we'd like to have as many people out as possible. So we'll probably have a sign-up sheet. We'll have some people that, um, that kind of commit to coming. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking a little more about that. That'll be here before we know it, of course. Um, um, <laughs> Year just flies by. Um, can't believe uh, we're looking at uh, the end of summer already. Uh, we're also looking at doing a fun fest before Halloween, uh, something where we would have the church open to the neighbors, the community, and of course our church members for the little ones to come in, play some games, win some prizes, um, and uh, we'll be giving more information as that comes. And we're looking at doing a marriage seminar. Man, we're busy, aren't we? Um, October 15th and 16th. Um, so mark your calendars for that. Uh, pastor's been in, co uh, in communication with, uh, with a gentleman that's going to come in and do that. Uh, we're probably even going to get to hear him preach, you know, perhaps the Sunday previous to that marriage seminar, uh, so we get to know him a little bit. Um, but I'm excited about that. I definitely want to take part in that. I'm hoping my schedule will allow for that. Um, remember small groups. Uh, we are looking at starting those in September. Um, if you haven't noticed, kind of the church kind of Walls out a little bit in the summer because everybody's doing things, and then September hits and the fall hits, and like everything is getting started. So that's why we're going through all of these different announcements, getting people ready. But uh, there is the sign up sheet. We are looking at days. We want to do that starting in September. Maybe we'll push it up to October, depending on, on you know, some, some might start in October, some might start in September, but we're really looking to get those started. We're excited about that as well. Um, the last announcement. 
that I have is regarding escape. Typically, when we have a Thursday, we have an escape the next Sunday. Um, if you will allow me, and forgive me, I've talked the last two weeks, and I also did my father's memorial, and I really need to be filled this morning. So if you'll, if you'll allow that, um, I really want to sit under pastor this morning and, and uh, have, see what God has for me. And so we're not going to have escape this Sunday, um, which will be this morning. Um, we will pick it back up, of course, uh, September. It'll be the first Thursday and third Thursday in September, and then we'll, we'll meet um, the following Sundays. Uh, it'll be me speaking either to the kids. I think one of those Sundays I'm actually speaking to the whole church, so everybody's going to have to hear me. Um, but uh, we'll continue on with that. If you are entering sixth grade this coming year, you know, so sixth grade is your next class that you're coming into. Once you start, what September hits, basically, if you would like to start coming to escape, you are welcome to come. And so I know that hits a few people um, in this church. So I, you might be 11 years old, you might be 12 years old, but if you are going into the sixth grade, the summer's over, it's September, come. So that will be next September. So we're looking forward to having some new faces in escape as well. Um, I think that is it. Um, the kids are dismissed at this time. Please go to your children's churches. And then as they are getting dismissed, I am going to pray uh, for the message. And uh, then we'll have one more song in the past week. All right, and Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would pour into each and every one in this building exactly what they need, and that you would meet them where they're at, that you would encourage them to become more like your son, Jesus. Pray that you feel pastor that is preaching and teaching today, Lord, would be just exactly what you want him to say, and that, Lord, you would lead his words, and that you would just be right amongst us in this congregation this morning. We ask you for your blessing, and for your help, and for your strength. We ask in Jesus' name.
Amen. How many believe that? Amen. It is through Jesus that we conquer. Through Him we find the victory. Amen? Amen. All right, take your Bibles this morning and turn with me, if you will, please, to the book of Acts, chapter 4. We're continuing our series this morning that I began a few weeks ago called Shining Bright in an Ever Darkening World. A few weeks ago, I shared out of Matthew chapter 5, ending with verses 14 to 16, and as you're finding Acts chapter 4, I'll read to you the foundational verses uh, in which this series is based upon, where Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and give it light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let's pray together this morning. Father, as we come to your word this morning, we thank you for the power of your word to be able to transform our lives. Jesus, we need you in our lives. We have no light without you. No. No light of the gospel without you. No light of your word that can enter someone's heart and, and, and change them without you. Help us to learn to lean on you as never before in these days in which we live. We have been called to this generation to serve you and to serve this generation in which we live. And we are your light into the world, Lord. May we shine brightly. May we learn the things that hinder us from doing that and then avoid those. And may we incorporate into our heart, our spirit, those things that you will use to cause us to burn brightly in an ever darkening world. And as always, we will give you and you alone all the praise and all the glory. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. We are to be people who reflect and generate the light of the Lord Jesus Christ in the world around us. Before we look at Acts chapter 4, I want to talk just a little bit about hindrances, things that keep us from burning bright. One of the things that is a definite deterrent to us burning bright is the fear of man. Proverbs 29 verse 25 says, the fear of man brings a snare. Now it says more and I'll expound on that in a moment, but I want to stop there for a moment. A snare is a trap. A snare is something that Trappers use even today to trap animals. An animal gets in that trap and he cannot go any further than that trap is chained to whatever it is they chain it to so he can't move. He's restricted from moving. The fear of man restricts us, keeps us from being what we're supposed to be out there in the world because we're afraid of man. All of us have certain fears and intimidation and so forth. I know I have things that intimidate me. There are certain people that intimidate me. And if I don't allow the Holy Spirit to fill me and, and, and use me, I will not confront those people or, or share with them the good news because they intimidate me. I want us to realize that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We have nothing to be afraid of. A few weeks ago, we were having dinner with uh, a few of the folks and the elders and wives, and Jeff Demo shared a, a story about a, a, a man that I knew and was a pastor in this community for many years. And he was a good man, he's a great preacher. He and I did some things together, and, and John and I had a great relationship. And he went home to be with the Lord about five years ago. His testimony was that he, he was a huge man. I called him Mick John, as a lot of people do. But he had spent a number of years in prison because he had, had killed 
people on different occasions. I did not realize it. Jeff had shared with me that he had actually been um, involved in organized crime and, and actually had been like a hitman. It didn't bother him a bit to snuff someone. But when he went to prison, there was a little old lady that used to go to the prison and she would share the word with people. And, and she got to, to meet him and sat down with him. She began to share with him the gospel message and how Jesus could change his life. And he told her, he said, you don't know who I am. You don't even know what I've done. If you knew who I was, you would be afraid of me. You wouldn't even come around here. She said, if you knew my Jesus, you'd be afraid of me. <laughs> that lady won him to the Lord Jesus Christ. He became a great pastor in this community, pastor a couple different churches, and was a soul winner, loved people. That Jesus in us is greater than anyone, and we should not be intimidated. Intimidation will keep us from shining brightly in the world around us. The fear of man brings a snare. It, it, it hinders us. It, it, it traps us. It keeps us from, from moving in the things of God in which the way we should. It says, but whosoever, let me read this here, but whosoever puts his trust in the Lord shall be safe. God promises to keep us in his will, safety in his will. Now that may mean we face persecution. We think of safety, we think everything's going to be just wonderful, never have any problems, and everybody's going to come against us. That isn't necessarily so. What God says is that I will keep you in safety. His safety means that we're in his will, and he will keep us, and he will protect us according to the way he wants us to be protected. And we put our trust in him. We can move forward and shine brightly in the lives of people who even don't want that light shining on them. What are we afraid of when it comes to the fear of man? Well, we're afraid of confrontation. Few of us like confrontation. I don't know about you, but I, I like peace. I just sit, sit under a, uh, a willow tree in the summertime and just drink a little lemonade and be comfortable and, and just, just go through life and everything be smooth. Isn't that wonderful? Life isn't like that, especially if we're going to be used of the Lord. We're going to face the Apostle Paul said, that all of those, not some, not a few, all those who live godly in Christ Jesus will face persecution. We have to expect it. Not everyone on this planet is going to like us because we're a Christian and we let our lights shine. So we need to get over the fear of confrontation and know that God is with me. He will get me through things. Sometimes we're in fear of not being liked. We all like to be liked. We like everybody to like us. Our self-esteem is, is really not based upon what we think of ourselves. Our self-esteem mostly is based upon what we think others think of us. And we want to be liked. But we have to be willing to step out and perhaps not even be liked by certain folks. Sometimes we're afraid of retaliation. What will they do? Will they, you know, come against me? Will they, will they turn people against me? Will they lie about me? Will they want to hurt me? Sometimes it's the fear of not knowing what to say. I submit to you that as we ask the Lord to help us, he will fill us with what he wants us to say as we speak out, he fills us with the words. How many of us, most of us, have had a time in our life where we've, we've witnessed to somebody who was, who was willing to listen, and all of a sudden there's scripture coming to your mind and, and things happening, and, and you're saying things, you say, well, I didn't even know I knew that, you know? And it's, it's, it's God. He does it. He says, you step up to the plate, I'll, I'll take care of the batting part. How do we deal with this fear of man? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because it says it in Acts chapter 4. Did you find that yet? 
Acts chapter 4 comes after Acts chapter 3. Isn't that amazing? So it's wonderful how it's all organized like that, isn't it? Well, Acts chapter 3, Peter and John healed a man at the, at the, at the, at the, at the gate, beautiful, who had never walked. He was, in his, you know, he was a, a mature man in his 40s or older. And Peter and John were used of God to do a mighty miracle and to bring healing to him. He went with them into the temple after he was healed, and, and people saw it, and they were just amazing. He was lifting and praising God. They had watched this man sit here and beg for his sustenance for years, and now he walks in with Peter and John. Peter and John begin to explain to the people. The people come after them. They, they begin to treat them like they're gods, and, and Peter says, no, 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 we're just like you. It was through Jesus that we did this, and they begin to preach Jesus in the third chapter of Acts. And then Acts chapter 4, verse 1, it says this. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priest, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them, not in a good way. The Bible talks about laying on hands, but this was not a good way. They grabbed them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word, as it was preached in Acts chapter 3, believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. That's a pretty good harvest for one day. And that's just the men. There were women and children also that had come to the Lord because of this miracle that God did and the preaching of the word of God, they came to trust in Jesus Christ. Verse 5. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. This is the entire group of them. This is all the religious leaders that were in that immediate area. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked them, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter should have been filled with fear. They had just taken his Lord a couple months before and tried him, found no fault with Jesus, but still crucified him. And now they have found fault with this two, Peter and John. And instead of being filled with fear, he is filled with the Holy Spirit. That is the key, dear friends, to burning bright, a major key. There's others I'll be sharing as we go along, but that is a key thing. We can be filled with the Holy Spirit, or we can be filled with a lot of other stuff. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is being consecrated to Him, being having our, our hearts and our minds concentrated on, on the Holy Spirit and, and being led and directed by Him. I would like to tell you that I was filled with the Holy Spirit 24-7, but I'm not. Sometimes I can be filled with fear myself, intimidation. I can be filled with anger. And those things motivate me. Those things can, can, can snuff out the spirit-filled life that God wants me to walk in. I like to do this, and I, and I don't a lot of times. It's just because and I walk out of the place feeling like, I, oh, I didn't like to do that. I like when I go into a restaurant, and the waiter or the waitress comes to the table, and they bring you a, what would you like to drink? And it's, you know, water or whatever. And they bring that drink, and they're about to take our order. I like to just say to them, you know, we're going to pray here in a minute over the food when you bring it. Is there anything that we can pray with you about or for you? And you know, every time I've done that, just about every time, they come up with something. We did this at the Panda House a while back, and the little waitress had a lot of different things. 
uh, she was going through an unwanted divorce. Her husband left her. Could you pray for that? You know, and, and, and go through the report. The next time I was in there, boy, she would, she remembered me. She remembered us at the table. But sometimes I sit down and I'm, I'm filled with other things. I'm not thinking. I'm thinking about other things. I'm thinking about what other conversation could be about her. What's our topic? What do I have to talk to? You know, so many things we can be filled with. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that I'm focused on Him. I understand that He is, is, is my Lord and my Savior. He is my safety, and I am to burn His light bright through my life. Verse 8 again. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done, to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, it's a little personal here, whom God raised up from the dead, it's very doctrinal, by him this man stands here before you.